Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another crazy episode of Security Matters. We're going to have some fun today. This is a little bit of a version two from last week when we met some of our other scholarship awardees. Um, we are really excited about this, this COVID era success story that the SEA Women in Security Forum um, orchestrated in a, a relatively short amount of time. Um, today, we've got a couple more of our scholarship awardees. Um, you are going to meet Ryan and you're going to meet Marguerite. And we've got Dira with us from the grading committee. So we'll hear about how that process went for her. And Cameron's with us also from the donor committee, which we were all afraid we wouldn't get a penny because of COVID was crushing our industry. But um, we actually did really, really well and were able to give out some great awards. So um, I'll shut up and I will kick this around to our panelists so they can get introduced for those of you who don't know them. And Marguerite, we'll just go ahead and start with you just as much as you sort of care to share uh, about your background um, for our industry. All right, well, thank you. My name is Marguerite Evans. I am currently a physical security event security lead for the Phoenix Sun. And my background is very, very, very small. Actually, this is my first security job. My military background, though, is what got me interested in the industry. I am 15 year um, veteran of the Army Reserves. This will be my 16th year just this month. And I got interested in security because of someone else I know in the Illinois National Guard who had gone to a security school set for international out in San Diego. He told me this is probably probably the best industry to use my skill set, which comes from hospitality, um, customer service, 20 years in customer service, actually, my military background. And he said, it's a culmination of my skills, and I'll be able to use it, use every skill that I have in this industry. So I actually ended up going to Cover 6 Security Academy last year, so that's my government job, with no clear indication of how I was going to enter the security industry except for the connections that I made with the school. But because of COVID, everything switched up and now I'm actually delving into physical security and learning from some of the best that the NBA has to offer when it comes to security. That's awesome. I love the success story out of COVID there. Uh, Rayanne, uh, go ahead and give us your uh, background there and um, bring us up to speed how you found the, the Women's Security Forum. Yeah, um, well, thank, first off, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ryan Burke. I am with Identiv. I am the partner marketing and events manager there. Um, <clears throat> I focus on our global events and I also manage our uh, partner programs, marketing initiatives and activities. Um, <clears throat> been in the industry about five years, um, which is pretty short <laughs> compared to most people in the industry when I first joined it became very clear that most people that enter the security industry don't leave it. <laughs> and uh, most people are in you know, 20 plus years. So still in the, in the beginning stages. Um, as far as finding the SIA Women in Security uh, Scholarship, um, I'm, pr I'm, I'm pretty active with SIA, um, just the association as far as trade shows and events and, and uh, partnering initiatives there. And I saw the email come in and thought I'd take a look. And um, I talked to one of my colleagues who's very involved uh, with the Women in Security Forum. And she told me to go for it. So um, I did. And I'm very happy I did. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, let's meet Dira. Dira was part of the grading committee. So we'll see. Uh, and I don't know if she if she happened to grade your folks. I know you, you guys graded several. Maybe you can tell us about some of that, dear. When you get, I'll never well, let's tell. go ahead and get. I'll never let's, tell. <laughs> okay, let's get some of your uh, some of your background out there for our viewers. Um, as much as you care to to share with them. Thank you. Great. Sure. Uh, so I'm Dear Bluestone. I have an MBA and significant experience in senior management, primarily devoted to procuring business within the federal government, civilian intel and DOD. Um, I'm currently the senior business development manager for PAE. And I love them. I've only been with them about a month, but I love them. 
I um, have always been active in diversity and inclusion, uh, specifically with the organizations that I've worked for. I came to SIA through a partner organization that I work with uh, called the National Capital Region Security Forum. And I am their director of communication and marketing. Um, and we also helped to get CM members. I was real interested in getting more involved, uh, which was when I was recruited to become a uh, part of the grading committee for the scholarship program. I was thrilled to be a part of it. This is the first year that we've had the program and it was very exciting. Uh, we awarded $6,600 to over 12, it was 12 scholarship awardees. Yeah, amazing work. And, and in a very short time frame, maybe I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, maybe. Um, and our, our last panelist today, Cameron Javdani, is with us. He's been on my show before. He's the president of uh, Sound Design, but uh, or Sound Secure, is it? Sound Design? Don't, don't want to mess that up. Sorry, Cameron. Um, but he was also part of our donor committee, which uh, I helped out with. And we were really afraid we wouldn't be able to raise a penny. Like, we had our doubts. So, Cameron, welcome aboard. Go ahead and... Uh, let, let our, uh, our folks who haven't met you uh, learn a little bit about you, and um, then we'll get into the show. Thanks, Andrew. It's good to be back with you. Uh, I'm the, the president and co-founder of Sound Secure. Uh, sound design works, too, if that's what you want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Industry background spans almost a decade now, and I've been working on the audio side of technology for almost that entire period. Got involved with SIA back in maybe 2011 or 2012, uh, and then much more recently with the Women in Security Forum, I believe at the uh, ISC West 2019 forum uh, that was held. Um, when I was asked initially to participate in the donor committee, uh, I think this was the early part of March when Maureen Carlo reached out to me and I said, sure, let's, let's do it. And then just a few weeks later, it felt like the entire economy shut down around, around late March, early April. So uh, I certainly felt the stress that you described on the committee to say, how on earth are we going to raise funds for, for this effort when there's so much uncertainty that's going on with, with COVID and, and the near-term future is so uncertain? But what was very inspiring to see was how the industry rallied together and despite all that uncertainty said, yes, we're going to contribute funds to this initiative because inclusion and diversity is so important for us. Uh, and so to see the, the industry leaders who have stepped up over that time period this spring to make contributions despite all the uncertainty in their own business, uh, it, it was inspiring to see. And I'm so fortunate to have been a part of it. Uh, now, that what that means is that there's a high bar for us next year to hit, because uh, presuming that COVID is in our rearview mirror, and fingers crossed that it is, um, we'll have our work cut out for us. But the way the industry responded to this initiative was just, it was a fantastic effort to be a part of. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we really did have a short fuse. Um, the president of SIA, Don Erickson, gave us Launch, launched this effort and said, okay, you got about 60 days to get it all done. And we're like, what? So we kind of went, we kind of went crazy. Um, but what we really did receive, we, we, we more than doubled our, our uh, original effort. So our goal, uh, we, we more than doubled our goal, which was incredible. And that allowed us to give out a lot more, uh, a lot more awards. Um, so let's go back to our awardees real quick. What was your time frame once you learned about it, that you were able to apply? Was it I don't know when it, I'm not, I'm not sure from when it got announced to when you had to have your application in. Um, was, did, was there adequate time for you to, to apply? Did you feel like you were able to put your like best foot forward down in your applications? And we'll start with uh, Ryan. Yeah, um, so the, the second I got the email, I kind of started the process. I wanted to you know make sure I had enough time. I mean, the last time I filled out something like that. I was, you know, 16, 17. And I remember it being a gruesome, gruesome uh, process. This was a much nicer process. Um, but, uh, you know, I know that they even extended the, the deadline. So I felt like I had adequate time, but I also jumped on it uh, right away. So, um, you know, and I think some people did need a little more time, uh, hence the the extension, but I thought I thought it was great. Um, I know you guys didn't have a lot of time to pull it all together on your end, uh, but thank you for doing so. Yeah, it's, it, one of our one of our awardees last week. I think it was Erin. She put hers in on the last day, just so she was she was debating whether she had enough information. It was kind of interesting her story. Um, Marguerite, how about yourself? Uh, when did you learn about it, and how much time did you have once you got started? 
So I did forget to say that I am a SIA student member, which is how I found out about okay. the Women's Security Forum. And um, with that, I've been getting the emails and as I'm going through things, trying to look over what I can, I finally actually clicked into an email the first week of June and it said that the scholarship deadline is June 14th. And I kind of panicked because <laughs> at that point I'm like, I could do it, but I don't know if I have enough time to write a 1100 word essay. So when I clicked into the website, it said there was an extension and I just took a collective mental and physical sigh. And I'm like, I can do this. Um, I had connections to, or not connections, I had mentors who were willing to write um, recommendations for me. I actually had three and the minimum was two and I was overcome with joy about that as well. A little collective sigh. But um, the most interesting part was meeting the, uh, when it came to meeting the deadline was making sure that I was well-versed enough in my essay. So I believe it was adequate time, even with the extension, it was plenty of time, just basically proving myself on paper as opposed to having an in-person interview that kind of made the, <laughs> kind of threw the balance for me. Well, I like the idea of the in-person interviews. I wonder if we could add that next year, that'd be fun. Um, <laughs> hey, Dara, so, so you work. got, you, I don't know how many you had to grade. And I know you guys passed them around. There were several graders of each one. What, uh, what struck you when you first started looking at the ones that you had? Um, what, what, what was the, the first thing that came to mind about, about the applicants? Well, I, I, I will definitely say that the applicants, it was a diverse group of wonderful women. And they were, they were all anxious to be trailblazers with a goal you know, towards increasing diversity and inclusion within the security industry. I mean, they, they were terrific. I mean, you, you really got to know the individuals through the questioning process. So the questions that they asked were, were completely on target and I thoroughly enjoyed the process. So I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, there, there were a lot of uh, eligibility requirements that everybody had to be or adhere adhere to. Like you had to be a student, a SIA student member, or a SIA uh, Women in Security Forum member, or a SIA uh, member company employed by a SIA member company. And um, there was, you know, it was it was a tough questionnaire. So I really I applaud uh, the, the diligence uh, by which the the candidates that that actually were awarded the the scholarships. I, I applaud their efforts. They did a tremendous job. And I, you know, it, I was thrilled to be part of the process and get to know the individuals through this application because you didn't see the photos, you didn't know who they belonged to. I mean, you're just looking at this random application, and uh, they were were terrific everybody had great ideas very inspiring yeah and i think about 75 percent of our applicants did uh meet the meet the scoring there was a sc minimum score right you had to achieve is that correct yeah yes okay and it was uh yeah it was uh, not it was the uh the memberships as well as the quality of the 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 essays and then it was you had to have a certain amount of years of professional experience and um be enrolled in accredited programs and things of that nature it was to better the future and shape the future generations to come in security and leaders yeah well i think we're well on our way judging by the we had two last week we've got two this week uh, 12, 12 new leaders for our industry that we're helping to promote. So I'm Absolutely. looking forward to learning more about all of them. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters. Um, we're talking with some of our 
Women in Security Forum Scholarship awardees today. We've also got members of our donor program, members of our grading program, and we heard it uh, was, was a wonderful thing to view. Let's get the awardees perspective on the questions just for a second. What was um, maybe the most difficult question that you recall from your application? And Marguerite, we'll start with you. Believe it or not, the most difficult question I had was about women who had come, or examples of leadership that I had before me. And it's not that it was difficult. The requirement for that was 100 words. So the examples that I used, the people that I used were um, Sergeant Majors that I served under in the Army Reserves. How can I fit two phenomenal women who are at the top of the level of experience as non-commissioned officers into 100 words? There are two different women and they had two different leadership styles and they both influenced me to be the person that I am as a non-commissioned officer myself. So 100 words is super concise and I think I ended up going to two <laughs> fifty. They were awesome. the best examples outside of relatives that I have that I can use to show why I want to be a leader and how I've been influenced as a leader. That's awesome. I love that strong leadership in, from women, you know, coming out of the armed forces. I served under, I was in the Navy, but I served under a lot of strong women myself. So it's really good stuff. Great role models. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, how about yourself? What was, um, what was your most difficult uh, task there that you recall? You know, I, I didn't find the questions difficult. Um, I actually found that I, I benefited from working through the exercise of answering the questions. Um, you know, just having to put on paper, you know, how you see, where you see yourself in 10 years and, and how you're going to use this scholarship and what it means. And I found that that exercise was extremely helpful because I have an idea of what did I, what I wanted to do, but it really required me to, you know, put down some specifics, um, you know, some timelines and that sort of thing and how I plan to continue growing within the industry and within the craft uh, that I'm choosing. So I didn't think it was necessarily hard, but it definitely is a little difficult to take that extra step and really look inward and, and step back and, and put it out all on paper <laughs> and, uh, you know, polish it up <laughs> so that it's readable. That's awesome. I'm, I, I love it that you both took it like seriously, you know, took it to heart and had to, had to put some, you know, some of the, that work that was in, I think that's what Deer, I think experienced. And I heard that last week from our other grader, uh, which was uh, Gloria Salmaron, who said that the, what she learned about the applicants was like so real. And so I think that's a testimony to the stuff that, that you ladies put in there. So My Cameron- My favorite was how they had to sorry. talk about how they were going to be advocates for others and what they were gonna do throughout their career and continue to do. And it was just, it was terrific to see- <laughs> That's awesome. So, so Cameron, you're a, a woman in security forum guy, uh, along with myself. There's a few of us. Um, as you go around the industry and you work with the, the women that are in our industry now, and they're you know highly underrepresented, we know that. Um, what roles do you see them in that maybe you didn't see them in five years ago or or previously, or what roles? I, it seems like it's wide open to me, but you are on the mainland. You get around a lot better than I do. So what um, what have you seen? Um, uh, you know, from, from that perspective that uh, maybe these women have to look forward to. Yeah, it, it's been an interesting and positive trend, Andrew. And when I started in the industry in 2011, you mainly saw women in roles like marketing uh, or, or office type, type roles. Now we see women taking the lead in sales roles. We see them taking the lead in engineering roles, in, in market-facing roles that are in positions of leadership, in high-level decision-making organizations, uh, and growing beyond the, the uh, proverbial glass ceiling that might have been applied to them in marketing or HR type positions. So to see the, the uh, industry adopt and, and, and frankly evolve after uh, uh, much too long of a time to, to start this trend, um, it's it's fantastic to see. I would like to see it continue to accelerate. And I'm thrilled that one of the questions on the application was about paying it forward. And my ears are open, and Andrew, I'm sure yours are as well, 
as to how people who have been in the industry as long as we have can continue to adapt and make new opportunities available. But I would say today it's a, a much more wide open frontier than it was when I began. That's not to say that we don't have more work to do, uh, but we are on positive trend. Yeah, and I think C is sort of setting an example with this form. I mean, as it has a great women's group, some are stronger in certain parts of the country uh, as well. Their women in security groups good. But we're SIA, I think, I think just because of its position in the industry, I, I love that this effort's just taken off. It's only been going for what a year, year. Um, um if if there was something that you wanted from the industry, uh, Margaret, I'll go back to you. You know, what what type of mentorship or what type of doors can we open? Um, that would that you'd be interested in learning about other parts of the industry that you know you you see you go in these places and it's a you know a whole bunch of old guys right it's like hey dudes help me out here. Well, my entire life I've heard find your seat at the table, mm. and that's as a double minority as a woman and an African American. So the mentorship I would like to see would be. Um, beyond those borders, having a male counterpart help me find a seat at the table, that uh, way I can help someone else that doesn't fit the demographic that I'm in, or maybe does fit the demographic that I, I'm in, uh, have that same seat at the table. A lot of times you come across um, occupations that are centered around having degrees, and security is one of those industries where it's more certifications than degrees, and I'm finding that on both the physical and the cybersecurity side, and having an active mentor to be able to, you know, kind of open the doors for you, help you build a network. That's kind of what um, the bridge that I'm looking for and the bridge that I want to provide in the future. That's awesome. Make sure you lean on our Women in Security Forum group for that anytime, the entire group. Um, Ryan, how about yourself? You know, five years with Identive, a big, you know, well-known company. Um, uh, probably got a lot of, of a lot of different pathways I would think available to you um, at Identiv if you wanted them. Um, what what does it you know look like for you? And what do you think we could do as an industry to sort of help you explore maybe uh, whatever it is you your dreams would be inside of our industry? Um. Well, my um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but my um, focus, the way I'm using this uh, scholarship, is uh, in a project management. A program that I started in at UCSD. And I, I decided to go that direction because I can apply project management skills and methodologies in many different areas of a company, whether it's, you know, in internal organizational wise, um, or customer facing uh, programs, product launches, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm still kind of keeping an open mind as to where uh, within the company where I want to take those skills. Um, so as far as having, you know, a, a mentor or an advocate uh, within, you know, within the company or the industry, you know, I'd like to just figure out the best place for for me, me to fit and and see and be able to have those conversations uh, with male counterparts and and understand their roles and how I, I can fit in as well and bring my own you know unique skills uh, to the table. Yeah, Cameron and I are working hard to to teach these guys not to be afraid. Right, they're um, they have trouble mentoring women, and I don't know what they're afraid of, but this is an issue that that we've been challenged to help with that um, dialogue. Hey, dear, you've um, been very, very successful in your career. Um, what advice would you have um, for these young uh, women uh, as far as, you know, ways to move around with the guys uh, to, to get mentorship from the men where they, where they might need it? Um, what would you tell, tell them? Well, the, first of all, the sky's the limit. Don't, don't put any barriers on, on or any limitations on what you're able to accomplish. The sky is the limit. But definitely um, take advantage of any and every situation that you have to get mentorship wherever it might come from because everything is valuable. Every, every, every little bit is a gem that you could take and utilize and, and, and shape. And um, I just, the, the future is so strong for you guys. I'm so, it's, it's very exciting. It is very exciting. 
it's interesting how our our industry is is quite a growth industry and once people find it they're like wow these guys make money year after year we've been doing it for 30 years through all kinds of economic downturns all kinds of turmoil the security industry is good business it's a really good place to be cameron what about yourself if um if there's a something we can do to um open doors how do, how do we go about educating our our male peers that are, are maybe standing in the way too long you know these guys that won't retire when they're 80 it's like dude stay home Andrew, I think the biggest thing that you and I can both do, and I'll speak for the rest of the, the guys in the industry who are not accustomed to this positive trend, we need to listen more than we talk. And I'm sure you've been in plenty of meetings where it's a bunch of good old boys around the table who have known each other for 20, 30 years or more. And they've got a great relationship. Nothing wrong with that. But when someone new comes to the table, they're usually kept at arm's length. So let's be welcoming, let's ask about their history, what they can bring to the table, what they can offer, what their contribution is. I'll say the other thing in that uh, a lot of companies will hire based upon cultural fit. Does this person fit with our organizational culture? I think when you have that mentality, you're gonna end up keeping people out. And so rather than having the mindset of, will this person fit here? Ask the question, what will this person bring to us? What will this person contribute to make our organization grow. And by that small change in mindset, I think you're gonna find yourself with a wealth of new opportunities. You're gonna find yourself with whole new perspectives and whole new ways of doing things that are better and faster and maybe cheaper than you were doing them before. So listen more than you talk and be open to new ideas and new experiences. Awesome, that's good advice for the guys. They all, they all like to hear themselves ad nauseum. I'm one of them. My wife reminds me of that all the time. Um, all right, so we got a minute or so left. Final thoughts. Uh, Marty, what would you tell a, a woman that wanted to get into the security industry? It's an industry that is full of what you make of it. Um, being here at a, in a sports venue, it's electrifying at times and very boring at times, so a lot of dolts. But every day I try to take something and internalize it. See what I can do better, see how I can better serve the people that I work for and the building that I'm in. So make it yours, make it what you want, make it the job you want to come back to, and hopefully it's a learning experience wherever you go in the industry. That's awesome. Ryan, what about yourself? What would you tell uh, the women that want to get in our industry? Well, um, you know, I came from this to this industry from uh, the video game industry. So a very different industry. I was a little worried. Video game, super fun, really young, you know, <laughs> lunches, beer in the fridge, you know, super exciting. Um, but I fell in love with the people, uh, you know, whether it's trade shows or, you know, our customers, our partners, my colleagues, everyone in this industry is just awesome. And I fell in love with the people. All, you know, this industry is also very important. So there's, there's that feeling of doing something that is making a difference, um, you know, protecting people and, and really, you know, making a difference. So I would say, come on in, <laughs> join awesome. the industry. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, Cameron, Dara, thank you so much for participating on the committee. Again, Marguerite, Ryan, um, congratulations on your awards. Well-deserved. Hope to see you at the next event when we can all thank get you. back together live. Take care, everybody, and have a great day. Aloha. Thank you.